Hello, good morning, I hope you are fine. Um, did you know that the Bible is not a book? That the Bible is a library containing many books? That the Bible is a library that has inspired 2,000 years of history and more? Are you aware that most of the wisdom that has inspired the Western civilization is found in the Bible? So join us, if you know or don't know, in this adventure of trying to read the entire Bible five minutes a day in the next two or three years. So today we are going to be reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verses 1 to 11. And we will take another little text from 2 Timothy, the letter of St. Paul, to second letter of St. Paul to Timothy, his spiritual son, which is, um, the, and I we're going to be reading from chapter 4, from verses 6 to 18. And our gospel reading of today is taken from Matthew chapter 16 from verses 13 to 19. This is because today is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, the princes of the church, the most preeminent of the apostles. Peter was the successor, you know, he was the vicar of Christ after Jesus Christ, and uh, all the popes are successors according to the Catholic tradition of Saint Peter. And um, St. Paul is the most prominent apostle in the New Testament, writing half of the New Testament. So today is their feast day, and I attended a secondary school, the minor seminary, called St. Paul, and usually in those days, this was our great day, the day we would eat a big chunk of meat. So we all looked forward to it, and we would sing, Paul, Tis the end, the task is done, the good white fort, the chorus will run, and tie the heavenly rest and we. The righteous crown that wasted there. That's taken from today's second reading. So, this was a great, great day. And um, it was a day, especially, on which nothing could go wrong. Nothing could go wrong on this day. Now, talking about nothing could go wrong, in life, things do go wrong, unfortunately. So, I'm going to talk to you today about when tragedy strikes. When tragedy strikes, how the people around you react is very important. That can be due to sickness, that can be due to natural disaster, that can be due to an accident, that can be due to death of a loved one, whatever it is. However, tragedy decides to strike. When tragedy strikes, the way we react to people and the way the people around us react is very important. So this morning, in our first reading, in the Acts of the Apostles, the emperor, Nero, the emperor sorry, killed James, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church at the time. And the Bible says that he saw that this pleased the Jews. Remember that James was a Jew. His death pleased his fellow brothers and sisters. Sometimes, unfortunately, when bad things happen to you, there are people who would rejoice. So, child of God, when something happens to people, when tragedy happens to people, if we can't do anything, at least we should not rejoice. The second thing is that as soon as he saw that that pleased the Jews, he went ahead and arrested Peter. And the Bible says in that text that the church went into incessant prayer. They prayed for Peter without end, without season. And because of that, God sent an angel and delivered Peter from the prison because there were people who stood by him in prayers. When something, when tragedy happens to someone behind us or besides us or around us, let us make sure that we are there physically, in prayers, in words, in whatever ways we can to make sure that the tragedy doesn't wipe them out. In the second reading, St. Paul was in prison awaiting his death, and he writes to his son, Timothy. He says many things, many wonderful things, including this song I just sang, I have run the good, uh, I fought the good fight, I have run my race, now it's time for me to receive the crown which is waiting for me. He said all those beautiful things, and then he added, everyone has abandoned me. Everyone has abandoned me. Even Alexander, the, 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 the blacksmith, had betrayed him, only Luke stood by him. When tragedy strikes, let us not join the everyone who would abandon our friends. And I'd like to end by saying that the way people react around us when tragedy strikes is dependent on what it took us to be. For some people, we are just a necessity. For the church in Jerusalem, James was a necessity. He was their bishop. So as soon as he died, well, they got a new bishop. They didn't need him anymore. So they did nothing, they were indifferent. Some people will be indifferent to your tragedy because for them you were just a necessity. And if they, there's no more juice to be sucked out of you, they throw you into the trash. But for some other people, 
you are a real human being. That was the case with Peter when he was arrested. The church saw him not just as a necessity, but as a human being, a person that was worth loving and identifying with. This is what Jesus wanted to find out in the Gospel reading of this morning. He asked his disciples when he came to Caesarea Philippi, who do the people say the Son of Man is? Talking about himself. And then he followed up with the second question, who do you say I am? Because it was important to him that those who were closest to him knew who he was. And they weren't just, they weren't just taking him for a necessity. And Jesus said, and, and then Peter of course answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus says, Peter, you are the rock. I'm upon this rock. I will build my church and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Take note, before giving him the keys, Jesus identified him as solid, as a rock. Make sure those to whom you give the keys of your life are people you can consider as solid, as rock. I pray the Almighty God will bless and keep you today. He who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.